Excellent. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noah Ruiz, a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3 printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Welcome, everybody, in the show. Thank you so much for joining us. We're hanging out in YouTube, Facebook, our Discord server, uh, Twitter, as well as the Instagram, YouTube chat, other places. We're hanging out everywhere. So, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get right into the show with the first thing we normally do is we give everybody a coupon code. This is a 10% off coupon code. Use Waterboat, Waterbot. <laughs> Waterboat will get you 10% off your Water order. Waterbot. Waterboat. Bot. I said bot. Waterbot will get you. Boat. This is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Waterbot. Well, can we change it now? No, no. leave it. Oh, man. Should have made it something else. Should have made it skipper. Anyway, yeah, like water your order works on everything except gift certificates and subscriptions. So make sure to take advantage of that. We also got some freebie deals going on. We still got. Yeah, for uh, we're, we're offering a Circuit Player Express for mm -hmm. orders over a certain amount. <laughs> so go to adafruit.com slash free to see that. One of the ones I like is the, the printer one. If you get something that's over $200, you get free UPS uh, ground shipping for the continental state stuff. So go check out adafruit.com slash free if you want to know more about that stuff. Same day delivery for fine folks in New York City. That's an option. It still happens. So Circuit Python meeting happens every Monday at 2 p.m. hosted by Scott Shawcroft and Katni and Dan and Halbert and all the other awesome, amazing people that contribute to Circuit Python. Newsletters, adafruitdaily.com is where you can get daily newsletters. You have to opt into this one. You have to actually work hard to get this newsletter. It's not automatic. adafruit.com slash newsletter. That's the newsletter for products. It happens once a week. Discord, we're hanging out in the Discord chat. We're there, right there. That's it. It's the <laughs> it's the live broadcast chat room. Um, really great place to kind of get help, input, looking for folks that are working on similar things. Really great. You want to get some input from whatever you're working on or ask questions. There's a way to go. There's about seven thousand folks that are there, that have uh, that have been there, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it's really great. Really cool. Great place to uh, safe place. This week's project is brought to you by the letter uh, B for boat, <laughs> water. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into this water week's bot. project video. This really cool water bot. It's a little paddle boat powered by circuit, no. playground, and a cricket. So if we take a look inside, we have our enclosure that's housing our components on the inside. Snap fit lid. We have the waterproof uh, battery pack on the top here. We have some Ninja Flex seals to cover up the, um, the DC port. We also have Ninja Flex seals for the motor and some 3 printed propellers, a little frame and everything. The neat thing about this is that we are using the modular Cricut uh, enclosure that you designed a couple of weeks ago, Noah. And we have the tripod adapter here with our little uh, camera assortment uh, of parts like the silver ball head, a 20 to 20 uh, converter for camera tripods and a little GoPro session on there and of course some little googly eyes to give it some character and this is a nice little rover we have a ton of rover projects on learn yes we do but so we don't have any boat ones yeah hey until now how can you get the cricket on floating on water and yeah. moving a little bit that was mm -hmm. sort of the goal um, we'll talk more about sort of the products the project where it yeah. came from but for now, take a look at the Adafruit Learning System. We got a lot of great projects this week. Notably, um, we have a really cool s uh, Cricut Snake Bot from David Sells. Check You're that out. Off track. Go jump into the Cricut Paddle Bot. Take a look we at how track. we I just to assemble this. There's some this. great guides out there. Don't threat. There's more guides to check out. Let's take a look at Pedro's Paddle Wheel Boat. Yeah, so super simple. A uh, little flotation paddle bot. Uh, one of the cool things that you can modify and customize this for us. So we're doing like research. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things that you can check out like pH balance or like invasive species going around in your lake or ponds. So perfect little project for that. And because it is running on Cricut, 
you can definitely update this with some wireless controls upcoming code that's coming out really soon. Let me check that out. If you take a look at the guide at learn.adafruit.com, you can see all the parts that we use to build this. Pretty simple. It's just DC motors and a couple of 3D printed components. We've got some prerequisite guides that you can check out for doing, uh, checking out how to set up your Cricut, all the tools that you need, and all of the uh, ways you can modify, like the CAD and all that. Yep, some screws. I like that you have all the screws laid out. A certain amount of screws that we seem to use for every single project, so definitely stock up on those M2 screws. Mm. These small ones. Mm -hmm. if you take a look at the circuit diagram, you could check out how we wired this up. We're actually using the drive uh, terminal for this to push out a little bit more power than the motors was able to. Last week we showed up how we were hooking this up with the motor to try to have it dance, you know, have it like go backwards and forwards to do a little, yeah. uh, little you know, obstacle course to avoid things. But for whatever reason, it just doesn't have enough power. So we had to switch over to the drive terminal that seemed to provide uh, just enough um, force for it to uh, propel itself in the water. So we take a look at how we did the connections for that, as well as the various uh, wire lengths that you're gonna need. So you can reach the terminal with enough slack to uh, accommodate for where it is positioned on the cricket itself. Motors, uh, or the screws for all the various components are all listed there as well, as well as the noodle holder. Uh, the size for that, mm -hmm. we're actually using yeah. a smaller version of what uh, most noodle sizes are. It's are commonly found like at dollar stores, so they are a little bit more smaller. We take a look at the make code for this, pretty simple little setup that Noet set up for using the, uh, the drive and the motor uh, version in case you uh, want to experiment playing with the motor uh, one. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked out WebUSB, give it a try. We have a link there. It gives you the beta. It's literally just a thing on the end of the URL that lets you upload one click. I saw we had a blog post this morning about one click deploy. It kind of already exists. You just need to know about that special beta link. So if you want to try it out, please do so. Mm -hmm. It's been there for quite a while. We've been yes. adding it it's every like, single week. It's like, public? It really <laughs> drives me nuts to have a UF2 and have to drag it every single time. Yeah. So we take if a folks, look at you don't code. know what I'm talking about, let me know and I'll tell you. Yeah, so we could take a look at the code here. It does load in your browser. You take a look at yes, some of the ways. Yes, this is really cool. Yeah. It's not interactive until you hit the edit button. It's just let you know. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hit the button. Loads yeah. it in a new page in your kind of account, your little kind of temporary account. Mm -hmm. That I still don't know how this works. <laughs> this hasn't worked. No, yeah, there's thing. no login for this, I so it, it's a it loads right up. I think it's probably being cached somehow. Yeah. At any rate, this is how we set up. Uh, we got functions going in for having going forward, and then having it uh, where it's only pushing one motor, so we can actually have it turn around since we don't have backwards control. And we're using the when you're using drive, drive, you can't go backwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you'll have to use the motor but you will want to have a, something with less weight. We're pushing a camera and yeah. all these other parts. That's why it needs the, the, the drive. Um, yes. Very cool. So you can take a look at that experiment with mm -hmm. it having uh, some new dance moves or yep. maneuver, rearrange whatever. the blocks or create new ones. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It really is just kind of like move forward, back, left, and right, that sort of thing. Jumping over to the 3D portion of the guide, we can take a look at all the various parts that are required to print out this nice little boat. Ninja Flex, oh, Ninja, Ninja Flex. Flex come in and really make this project work, huh? Oh yeah, nice way to seal up your components so you don't have water coming in. Um, we did test these out with the 0.4 and the 0.8 millimeter nozzles just to speed up the print times on the enclosures, the lid, and the little bottom part of that lid there. The rest of the parts were all in the 0.4 millimeter, but they should work uh, just fine. The tolerances seem to work out pretty well between those. I'll say one thing, they, they look big. These are big parts, but somehow it fit on that little baby printer. Well, not oh, a big printer, the, but uh, it's a, it fits on a 150 bed, which is really great. That's actually what my goal was to make sure that it uh, would fit on most all printers. Uh, it seems very big. All right, cool. So uh, we're using the, so we're knocking off like about two to three hours of print time by uh, using by a using 0.8 a, nozzle? Exactly, Sweet. yeah. All the parts are properly laid out, so all you gotta do is lay them in your um, favorite slicer, and you don't, you shouldn't need any support materials for any of these parts. Yeah, even that overhang, it just, your printer, if it has a fan, it's yeah, just you can just print it. Yeah, just, just clean it up a little bit. Exactly. 
We have the Fusion 360 files for you, and of course, step files that you can edit. Mm -hmm. Right there in the GitHub. Yes. Yeah. You Can't don't have to use that. Fusion 360. You can use whatever. Yep, step's kind of open. So you can use whatever. We also have the flattened STL versions yeah. of that and all your favorite yes. repository sites. So you can check those out if you want to print, modify your own. Going on to the assembly, the first thing we want to do is increase our motor wire length. We're using our very favorite silicone coated wires because of the flexibility. We're able to tuck those around and uh, pass them, thread them through the lid, and they're not going to kink up or break on you. They are stranded. You got to tin them. Mm -hmm. So tin those. Definitely got to tin those up. And then we have a nice little uh, diagram or photo here of how the it's motor is actually assembled between these two parts. That uh, press fit together, uh, pretty airtight. You, they are um, Ninja Flex, so you're gonna have to squeeze them to get them to fit in there. Give me a second. Oh, we, yep. All right, audio still works. <laughs> All right. You always gotta <laughs> just check in. Hey, yeah, well, chat. Well, I'm completely <laughs> muted. And then the propeller is mounted on the shaft of the motor. Uh, we're using a nice little set screw here to make sure it doesn't wobble or fall out while you were paddling around. And that's mounted to the noodle holder, which you retainer. can... <laughs> I keep telling you that. Uh, <laughs> There's a retainer! <laughs> you can definitely modify this around to add more motors or add additional mounts for like a uh, uh, moisture sensor, pH, you know, checking different, um, uh, different things you can add to it, like lights or anything Does like anyone that. anyone else see a face, a sun puking wires? <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the first thing I saw. So uh, moving on to assembling the modular part of the case, the bottom can be switched out to house a different amount of uh, uh, like accessories. For I this one, I'm using the design. tripod <laughs> one before. This is actually the exact same tripod one that you used a couple weeks back. It just added Yay. the mounting holes for the noodle holders. It's also taller, so it encloses the whole thing. It's yes. great. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And then we're using the 3 8 to quarter 20 screw adapter to attach our GoPro. Um, the tolerance on this was really good. Um, you don't have to actually mm -hmm. create any threads. It actually prints the threads since they're yes. big enough. Yes. And you can just screw those in with flathead Even or a... Even on a 0.8 nozzle, you said? On a, you this said is all 0.8 nozzle, That's yeah. crazy. So the threads work out really well with the... Yep. Because they're big threads. Moving on to the lid. The snap fits onto the top there, has a nice little separation so the water shouldn't be able to get inside. We do have a port opening on the top for the wires to get through. Yes. And then uh, moving on to actually cutting down your noodles, we're just using we a box cutter. Yeah. yeah, they are kind of smaller. Yeah, so it's a 60, mill 60 millimeter uh, diameter noodle. Uh, these are commonly found like at grocery stores. We pretty much have these yeah, everywhere like, during the yeah. summer. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Brandy was using them also for like uh, holding kind of holding up. things up when you're painting them. So full noodles, yeah. yay! What a great flotation device, better than bottles. Yeah, and then the very cool little cardboard cutting uh, blade. Yeah, the canary. Yeah, the canary uh, brought to our attention by uh, mm -hmm. Donald. Donald Ed, Maker from Maker Project Lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this sliced right through it like butter. Definitely yeah, yeah. recommend one of these. It'll slice through your finger too. So be careful. Just because mm -hmm. it's a cardboard. <laughs> All right, moving on. Moving on to actually attaching the noodles. They snap fit into place. You do have a little bit of leeway to bend the uh, the noodle holders so mm -hmm. they can fit right yeah, in they there. Flex, they flex pretty well, actually, mm -hmm. just because of the frame design. Yeah, so we'll uh, thread all of our silicone coated wires through. And to hook up to the terminal, or to the, um, to the to terminal. drive terminal on the circuit play, or the cricket, uh, we didn't want to uh, solder two of the wires that connect into the five volt terminal, mm -hmm. so we use these very handy these wire so cool. joints. They're right here, actually. You want to just click on them real quick? Check out these wire pins. They're out of stock. No, they're really cool, actually. They, um, I didn't think that you could do you use it as a Y, but Pedro's using it as a Y splitter, which works out well. And that's mm -hmm. not for photograph there, but you can do it. It's the same part. You want to go over the overhead? Yeah. All right. If you look over the overhead, we can see how Pedro's using it here. Just having this plate over so you can kind of yes, you can get, get more isolation of what it I looks like. I didn't know how this worked at first. So it was kind of like rocking it back and forth. We actually, what, push the center down? So actually push the center down and there's one tab on each side that allows it to push down on this little metal part that flexes upwards and you can just stick your wire in between those and it'll uh, latch back upwards and it'll hold it in place. 
and you do have enough room to actually have two of these being held together in there. Nice way to connect wires without having to solder these up, especially if you are going to be switching these between oh, different yeah. terminals. So when we were testing these out, I don't want to solder a Y cable yes. and then have, you know, be screwed when I wanted to try out the motor. I really need more of these. You and get a pack of three for like a couple of bucks. Yeah, they're not super small, but because of the size of the Cricut right. and the case, there is enough room to actually mm -hmm. fit this on the side of the enclosure. So we'll have it close on you. So Robotics are kind of big, so the, the size kind of works out. Yeah. It's, it's kind of proportional scale. Yep. Works pretty well. So, so a handy tool to have in your toolbox for quickly prototyping, attaching wires. Uh, you are able to, as you've seen here, I did actually cut those uh, in half. They do come as a, a pair. Oh, you did. Yeah, so there's actually a mounting hole right in the center. Didn't need that, so I just chopped it off. I and then you have two. That. Oh. So it's actually a pack of six. <laughs> you don't know until you actually use them. I haven't used them yet. We've had these for quite a while. Huh? No, they're pretty new. Uh, July 16th. That's okay. when we ordered that's it. That's when we ordered it. Yeah. But the product ID is 3786. Fairly new. <laughs> that's how we know it's new. Uh, you can click on the it for all videos if you scroll down. Oh, we didn't actually all do video. a product video for this. Oh, oh no, it's right there. You can take a look at the launch date for that. <gasps> yeah, that's clever. Oh, it's Never when we had the Joy. Yeah, thing. 627. Okay. Yeah. Not too old. <clears throat> All right, anyway, let's get back to the guy. Pick those up if you have it. You probably already have because they're old. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you for doing that. Connecting motors. Back to you. So hooking up the motors, like we said, we're using the drive terminals to hook those up, sharing the 5 volt, and then attaching the grounds to the one and two terminal pins on there. And as we discussed, you can tuck away the wire joint on the side of the enclosure. We're using the waterproof battery case. It's a three double uh, A battery holder. Mounts right on top of the lid. Yep. And uh, you can actually insert threaded inserts like the M2 uh, type. Uh, the head, you know, the fly head for the tops of the screws will only fit at M2. Right. Yeah. That's the way the mounting holes are. Didn't you break one because you put a big screw? <laughs> no? No, I, I thought one broke. Fit through. Oh. <clears throat> uh, so those screws are into place, so you can add thread inserts. And then uh, moving on to the DC seal, so the power barrel is going to need to be covered up. So when it's plugged in with the barrel uh, power adapter, you can actually fit this Ninja Flex seal. That press fits right in place. Right, you really do have to squeeze it in because that's the beauty of Ninja Flex. It really mm -hmm. does squeeze and mold to whatever form. So yes. the way you designed it, I wish you could kind of show it off, but there's this little rim around it. I can just take it out. That here. really, uh, it's a chamfered edge that I'll, it's optimized for printing. Yeah. And it just, pop it just pops right out. Yeah, so you can see how those chamfered meet in the center there. That little gap is what allows the uh, the yeah, case to right kind of squeeze into it. So you just literally pop it in and it squeezes yep. and forms in there. Uh, shout out to Yanni, who who always is like, hey, you should do some waterproof like Ninja Flex mm -hmm. gaskets. I mean, we, we've been wanting to do so. This is a practical use of it. Like, this thing is in water. It needs to kind of, it kind of yeah. has to be there. Yeah, so the way you insert it is at uh, like two corners yeah. and then press fit it. Yeah, it's like. got a really tight fit, but Ninja Flex, you can just you know, squish it down in yeah. there. Really tight fit. Another thing I like is that it's the reason why it's that big, the openings, because you need to program the, the circuit playground. Yes. So, so I, did, I didn't want to make it any bigger, so you are going to have to use a, a smaller USB uh, cable to actually uh, program it while it's still in the case. Right. And grab one of these. You're good, man. We can move on to the camera parts. Okay. Just yeah. want to set it up. Right. Just so you can see real it's world. Sure. You can push yeah, that it in is like that. in there, man. Once it's in there, it's oh, yeah. easier to take it out. Oh yeah. Oh, so you can play around with the tolerances if you'd like, but I like that Ninja Flex is well, it's flexible, so it's it's got a little bit of extra give. So yeah, it is in there. <clears throat> and um, I would and say the, the circle has the same sort of grip to it, right? Yeah, yeah, it really does keep it out. And the last part is actually adding like heat shrink or electrical tape to actually seal up your. Uh, <laughs> that's a honkin. Blocks. That's a honkin DC jack. You, you, yeah, no, I did order some right angled ones. Right. It has a so screw block terminal. I think that's why it's so junky. Yeah, but you could kind of fashion your own, make mm -hmm. a right angled one, make it a lot slimmer because yeah, those so are already sealed. Yep. I so I did order some of those in, yeah. and we'll test those out. Sweet. 
maybe we'll get those in the st in the store because they're starting to use 2.1 jacks a lot. Yeah, and we do have adapters if you need those. Speaking of adapters, tell me about these camera parts. They're my favorite. I love camera parts. Yes, yeah, so we finally get to use this 20 to 20 screw adapter. What it's doing is connecting the 3 8 to quarter 20 to a regular ball head swivel. This is what it looks like close up. Yep, so it's just a quarter 20 on each side. Yeah. And it'll allow you to hook up a additional, uh, in our case, a little battery or a uh, ball head swivel mount for cameras. Yeah, these are pretty decent for small things like a GoPro. For your phone though, I probably wouldn't do that. Yeah, so if you take a look at the bottom part of that, we have a shoe mount part of it, but right on the bottom of that shoe mount is a screw yeah, it's uh, really nice for that. It's almost crucial to have, so you can use, attach it to something. Yeah, we use these Sony times for a lot mm -hmm. of projects. So we figured we stuff these. Yep, they're really nice. Cool. We also got this knuckle to tripod adapter. Yeah, you're gonna need one of these. We oh, this is on Amazon. Yeah, no. you can print your own. Like if you six don't. bucks. No. I or actually tried looking on Thingiverse. If anybody finds one, please post a link. There's got to be. Um, I did design one, but it's not a tripod. It's like a knuckle to it's a, a three knuckle to yeah. two knuckle. Yeah, it's like a weird uh, adapter. Yeah. That's where 3D printing works. Those weird ones. Mm. But that's pretty much it. Once you assemble that up, stick that in the water and float around. Program your dance moves or maneuvering around body of water obstacles. Uh, whatever you might need yeah. to do. Maybe do some autonomous mm -hmm. One autonomous One of the ideas was with the upcoming Raspberry Pi Cricket, maybe do some uh, image open, um, processing for that. Open OC. Open OC. CV. Um, have open it CV. look for like trash or like vasive species or something like that. I think just checking water modern. levels would be good. Like pH checking levels water or something. levels is probably the easiest thing you could do with this. Um, and yeah, works perfect. The uh, button's on top here, but you'll still have access to uh, have additional modes on the inside. So if you want to have a different uh, set of instructions load up when you uh, switch the um, the slide switch that's yeah. on the uh, mm -hmm. Super Playground. Or if you turn it off and turn it back on, it'll... I'm sure there's gonna be a way to like break out this slide switch, but for now it's easy enough to just open you up the case. You could, just to do some SMD. And there we go, you can have one where one turns on, moves one way, and then moves it the other way. So you can uh, definitely uh, overcome that limitation of not being able to uh, turn the motors in the opposite way by just having it turn one way until yeah. it completely rotates and then have both of the motors turn on to have it turn around. Cool. Like that. So the case is in the center of the pool noodles. It's just in the right spot for, uh, oh, for balancing. balancing it. Yeah. yeah. So we did run into that where we had it a little but bit off right because we were trying to counterbalance it. The camera this actually does a really good job of counterbalancing yeah. it. When but it you still bounces it. without it, right? Yes, yeah. it does. And I see that uh, John K was asking, is a cricket housing waterproof? It is water resistant. If you take a look at the video, we actually did have a couple of accidental dips in the pool where it went upside down. Yeah. Launching, I don't think it's in, the, in this clip, but it's in oh. the video. Yeah, it's in the YouTube video. Please watch it. Yeah, where it just goes upside down and it did survive. Uh, three dips in the water <laughs> yeah. going completely upside down. Now the reason why I dipped the first time is because I kind of tried to propel it myself and mm -hmm. that just led it forward and yeah. it fell in. Now you could, you could modify the design so that the, the pool noodles are bigger mm -hmm. and that way you cannot have it over, you know, roll over. Yeah. But then you won't be limited to that bit bed size. You want to keep it within that bed size. Yeah. So you had to kind of... If you have a one, you definitely can have it be like a, f uh, a square structure so yeah. that there's no way it can go forward. Yeah. So there's another <coughs> thing that you could do. Or even better, use uh, multiple pieces so that you could extend it. You can just get different brackets yeah. and extend it and just have the pool noodle be mm -hmm. separate parts that you kind of bolt in. So we don't recommend dunking it completely underwater. You no, can. Water resistant. Yeah, it is water resistant. Um, this is the exact same. The battery can be dunked, apparently, because that yeah. is waterproof. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at that battery real quick. Well, we were looking at it already. It's a, it's a battery that has a built-in gasket to it. If you've not seen it, I might as well bring it up here. Let's take a look at the, the site. It's a $4 battery case because it's waterproof. It comes with the machine screws and washers that are needed to kind of seal it. And there's a little rubber gasket seal here. <coughs> it also has a, a power button that's uh, squishy and waterproof as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the IP rating is. Maybe there is one, maybe not. I that much <clears throat> but we didn't actually submerge this into the water yeah just dunked it for a little bit of time 
Waterproof DC power plugs, Pedro. Did you know we had these? I bet you did. I did not know that. I bet you didn't. Wow. There we go. I only knew because I looked down in the description. Always read the descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. We, we're going to play with this one then. Totally. Did you know that? I don't know. Yeah. Although I want a right angled one so it's not sticking out so yeah, far. It's a, yeah, yeah. It becomes a tail. Yeah. Mine's a tail of my dragon. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the guide and... Pretty much the closer. Have... Got some questions. There's some comments on here. Kirby did find some GoPro customizable mounts. Excellent. It is a... Uh, you can edit it in the customizer. Ooh, I like and those. then John K is saying, what about a feather cricket with the ASP8266? Yes. 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 We are definitely going to revisit this project with some wireless controls. Yeah. Uh, we're going to try Probably to package NRF. it all together because uh, Lamar is working on a moisture sensor. So I definitely yes. want to make a mount for that and then just roll it all in one wireless control, moisture sensing, right. pond bot. Or yeah. There's whatever. a lot of development being done in the NRF um, for mm -hmm. uh, circuit py uh, Python. Uh, circuit Python, yes. So uh, shout out to the team for working on that. Yeah. Cool. And he's saying that you can use Vaseline around the cover to help keep the water out. Yes, we did see some YouTube videos that were highlighting how to make those yeah vaseline happen. was one of the tricks mm -hmm. to kind of seal it yeah to so keep the electronics check those dry. out um for this uh project the goal was just making the let's paddle bot a, propel yeah. in the water let's get a cricket <laughs> floating on water yeah that was the main goal for this project because yeah. when we first started out we had it hooked up to the motor terminals and i think we have footage of that yeah here's the kind of the inception of it Hey, guess oh, yeah. what? It was actually supposed to be Hans. It was supposed to be a <laughs> one of those Bristol of paper bots. Craft <laughs> but when Hans. I was setting up the mounts for the motor, it looked just like a boat. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm going to abandon this and Sorry, Hans. go a completely different way with it. Yeah. Which is so, great. That's what happens with projects. Yeah, but we still have these mounts. I'll probably visit, revisit this project uh, yeah, it's, as it's a pretty simple, slim, yeah. easy one. Yeah, this was the first attempt of making it. Uh, had a much smaller sized uh, pull noodles for that. Mm -hmm. and like we were saying before, this is what happens when we hooked it up to the motor. Yeah, it wasn't propelling at all. It propels, but once you get in the water, man, it's too. It's yeah, just yeah. too much friction. And then when we set it up to <laughs> the drive uh, terminal, definitely got a lot more power out of that. It was actually able to push itself. So um, yeah. you also elevated the pep powder so they weren't so much in the water too. Little yes. tweaks in here and there mm -hmm. go a long way. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, and the Ninja like Flex motor covers or couplers or whatever we can call them, mm -hmm. they do keep water out. Yep. Oh, they're nice and tight. So that's Asus project. Nice, simple little rover for water use. Um, like we were saying, we have a bunch in the learn guide uh, section, uh, but one to make a little water one. And we'll definitely revisit this with wireless control, some moisture sensing stuff, and more. Let's see what other mounts and lights and stuff we can add to it and still keep it afloat. If you guys are still looking for Circuit Playground, um, for Circuit Playground version of the Cricket, yeah, yeah. head on over to DigiKey. They still have a couple in stock. Yep, there it is. I got a short link too for you if you guys want that. Let me go ahead and throw it in the shop. There she goes, DigiKey. It's a short link. Ooh. Very cool. So if you want to pick one up for the Circuit Playground Express, you can. We have some for the Feather that are in stock as well, mm -hmm. so we want to play with that. If you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, maybe some battery holders, you can use coupon code WaterBot. Yes. It's you ten percent off. Good Valid work. until 11.59 p.m. tonight. That's right. Go ahead and move on to this week's What Are We Prototyping? Yay. All right, let's take a look at some stuff that we're prototyping. Some more cool Lego stuff. Yep. It works. Lego, 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 Lego. I'll do this one first. So. Sure. Work on some Lego stuff, more Lego stuff. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do, let's go to the overhead, turn on project title, A, paddle wheel rover, change that to this one, Lego battery case. All right, well now you know what we're working on. We're working on a Lego battery case. These are the battery, uh, new battery holders that we have in the shop. Take a look at them. It is, PID this PID 3842 this is a 3 
three double A battery holder with a 2.1 millimeter jack. These are nice battery holders. Um, they're kind of open. They have two mounting holes, so you can mount this to different things. It already has the cable soldered onto it, so this is really great for the Cricut. This is pretty much for the Cricut, and this came. This comes with the Ada Box uh, Cricut version. I think it's eight or nine. We're on eight, right? Yeah, or seven. No, we're on eight. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the task was to make a kind of a Lego case for this battery holder. So we put together this little mount that has standoffs here. So if I take out one of the batteries, you can see where the screws are. So that's where the screw is. It drives into the mounting hole. It's open here. There's like four squares that are open here. So it's, it prints pretty quickly. Um, there's some snap fit features here, a little lip there. The cover is sort of this box here. So the box is this guy here. It's just a square box and it has a little lip here that kind of allows to glue other things onto that. It's got an opening for the, for the, the wire and it has these nubs here to snap fit into, these, into this lip. So I'm going to connect it now so you've got a nice snap fit case for your battery. So if you want to make it Lego, you have the top and the bottom to work with. So we made some little face plates that are Lego compatible. There's the first one. These are all the bottom Lego tubes, I guess you would say, that are found on the bottom of Legos. So those are the tubes that made into the, into the, uh, into the studs. This is the second face plate. Right. It's got a flat bottom here, and then these are the studs, and these are actual Lego pieces that connect into that. So what you could do is you kind of snap this on here, attach it with some glue, and at the bottom you have an option to either do that again or put this piece here. So now you have an 8x8 eight eight stud brick that can plug into face plates or other Lego pieces. And um, the reason why I didn't glue these is so you can see it. Um, so once these are glued, you do have access to the batteries because it's a snap fit case. You just open it like that, which is pretty nice. Uh, so this is a, a, just a small little case for the battery holder. Lego compatible, 3D printed. My tip for printing Lego tubes, this guy here, you want to use a 0.1 layer height. That's 100 microns. And if, you, if your printer can do it, get a 0.25 nozzle for it and start playing around with that because you can make some phenomenal quality Lego adapter pieces. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do. Mm. Yes, so you're still able to actually do it with a 0.4 mil nozzle, but the studs uh, work you're well. You get some like elephant footing mm. on the right. top parts of the That's studs. Right. The ones that I printed with the regular 0.4 of these, I mm -hmm. threw it away. They, they didn't work well. These work really well. No CAD modifications to the holes. Just using a different nozzle and layer, layer height is what made it work. So th what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap this onto this, to these uh, studs here just to show how kind of well it works. And you can use this, um, again, to connect uh, other face space on top of it. Now I've got like a little sandwich here. It's kind of funny. Inverted Lego. Nothing here, nothing here. It's kind of fun. So that's how that works. It's a one millimeter um, thickness of this, of this base plate here. Um, so that's pretty nice and flexible. This is actually a nice uh, PLA filament that we're looking at. It's uh, from Protopasta. It's called Cupid's. Glitter, pink, crush, something, something or other. We'll look at it in a second here. But those are the parts that I'm working on. Um, I actually have it already released on GitHub if you'd like to play around with it. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, boy. I hit the X button. Yeah, so they're over here on GitHub. If you go to the Adafruit Learning System Guide repo, there's a Cricut Mounts repo. And then inside of there, there's STL solids and vectors. So if you go to the solids, you can get the step files for all of these guys. The Lego case, they're all named right, 3AA battery Lego case, the step file, and the Fusion 360 file, and then the STLs as well. STLs can be viewed here in GitHub, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to look at the, um, the Lego case here. It's just a box, but I can kind of move around it. You'll have to reorient the, um, you know, the STL because I didn't orient it yet because it's, it's really quick. It's just how I export it out of Fusion because it's an assembly. Yeah, Speaking actually, I don't know where until I'm actually uploading to yes, the right. repo sites. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and take a look at that uh, design here. So this is the design that we put together in Fusion. Uh, notably, the component was kind of remixed so that it looks more like the actual component because uh, I got it from, uh, it was a step file that DigiKey offered, and um, 
or they have it on their site, so I downloaded it, modified it. Here's a tip. If you're working on an assembly with a couple of different components and you want to get some colors really quick, hit the S key, type in color. Component color cycling toggle. Let's go ahead and enter. Boom. I got some nice pretty colors. Very cool. Um, so if we look a look at the animation, you get a nice little uh, kind of explosion view of how all the pieces kind of layer together. They sandwich and fit together. Really nice. You can kind of roll, ro revolve around it and see. There's this little bit of a platform here. It's just kind of elevate the, the battery holder because I got these standoffs here. The reason why I have standoffs is because um, the screws have to be flush right here with, the, with those mounting holes on the battery holder itself. That's got to be flush, so I needed some extra room to work with. So instead of thickening the whole bottom base, I just created these standoffs and then created this sort of centerpiece that elevates it. So when you uh, sandwich together, you can, well, let's see if it happens again. There it goes. You kind of get a good look there. Another way to kind of get a good look at your design, use the cross-section analysis, section analysis rather. So I can kind of get a slice inside here and I can see how well uh, my standoffs are mating with the bottom surface and other things like that. And you can kind of change out the, se the section type so I can go this way. You see how that bottom is really helping support that bottom area there. All right, cool. Yeah, very neat. So that's the battery holder. You can also do some user parameters if you wanted to change some things. Maybe you wanted to change the studs from 4.9 to 5 or something. And if your slice settings just weren't working and you just had to modify the CAD, you can do that here. Um, now, this is only available in Fusion 360. If you use the step file, you can just modify it however you like in whatever CAD package. Open, shape, on shape, or SolidWorks, or any of those guys are great. So with that, um, let's jump back over to the web browser. We're also looking at some other cool stuff. Mike Dole, who is uh, injectionable in some of the Adafruit cases, uh, is working on some great stuff too. Here's a sneak peek. He's working on this Lego case. Sort of this octagon, fully mm -hmm. enclosed, hole at the top, Lego studs at the, at the top, uh, Lego things at the bottom with a battery door. Looks really cool. Can't wait to print it out. Shout out to Mike. So that is something forthcoming. Nice little hinge design on the back there. Yeah, very cool. So I kind of need this battery uh, to show the next thing. I've been working on this rack and pinion mechanism for too long that I'd like to admit. Well, but you it, went it's from, a very but difficult. You went between different uh, versions. You yeah, off with the a cardboard version. That was the original intent. Was like, I really want this thing to work with cardboard, mm -hmm. chipboard in this case. So, for prototyping, this is really great. So the way the rack and pinion works is that it is uh, three plates that are s are bolted together. Top plate has uh, these teeth, two two sets of teeth. The base plate has a slot that limits the travel of the uh, of the pin. This mounter housing is uh, allows the <laughs> man. This is tough to explain. I got to I got to figure it out. So this back here is a, is actually a track as well. Mm -hmm. It's a slot. It's kind of a big slot for this mounter housing. So that so this goes back and forth like that. There's a pin right here that's securing the drive hub, which is connected to the motor shaft, to the wheel, and there's a heated insert. <laughs> there's a Lego on here. There's a heated insert and a screw that sets it in there. So when, you, uh, when this thing rotates, it's able to catch onto the teeth and rotate back and forth. Once it gets to the end here, see this has enough clearance to clear the track, this wheel, this gear. It has enough clearance to clear the track and then it catches that next top teeth. And as it's rotating, it goes back. So you can see it doing that. So this is a TT motor, nice and expensive motor. It's a Cricut, Circuit Player and Express. We're wired into the motor thing. We're wired into the motor terminals. So I, I just set up a quick little sketch and make code. That's to stop it. This is going to go. So there it is moving at 50% uh, speed. I uh, using the switch, it can make it go 100% sp uh, speed. Increases the brightness of the NeoPixels. Makes them look worried. Like, what's going on here? The last kind of bit I needed to work on was this, was uh, the stand 
and they ended up working well as little feet. So I designed them as little feet. So there's a track moving back and forth. So this is reciprocating or linear converting rotational motion to linear motion. So that's what the mechanism is kind of meant to do. And it was really hard to get this thing to work without like catching the teeth. So I think a lot of the, the, the magic here is really what's underneath here. And I'll have to show that in a video and a guide because <laughs> it's a little much. Um, but yeah, that's what I have so far. Very neat. Um, gears are, are interesting to work with. Kind of a silly thing as well, but I think that's fine. Yeah, kind of neat. That's the Rack Opinion project. It'd actually be probably next week's project. Kind of has to be. I already started the guide, so got to get that video going. So it kind of was a Lego battery case, but it was also that. It's mm -hmm. <clears throat> a cool, nice way to translate rotational motion to linear. I killed the, there it is. Cool. I have a quick question from Andy asking, what's the differences between cardboard and chipboard? So cardboard is, uh, it has like corrugations in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got like uh, air can, in it. Yeah, chipboard can, is just a solid, there's nothing in between the... the it's like a sandwich of yeah. those parts. If you go over the overhead, you can quickly see that cardboard. Isn't there a guide from John that talks about this too? Yeah, there is a whole guide yeah. from John. You can, there, there you go. go. So, so you can cardboard. see the cardboard has the corrugation in the middle there. So it's got like these air gaps. Yeah. Oh man, this focusing stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So it's not going to be able to hold as much weight. So you can, you know, pretty much bend it like that. Chipboard, you're not going to be able to because there is material all sandwiched in the middle. So yeah. It has more yep. strength. Yeah, and you can layer them on top like I did here. Yep. You just keep layering these. Chip or the cardboard has the air pockets there. That's created by the corrugation. Yeah. There you go. It's just the filling. Turning off all the things here. All right, sweet. So if we go to learning guides, wait, no, we're already done with that. What are we doing? Let's, Let's take see. a look at Shop Talk. Into, now we're in Shop Talk. All right, Shop Talk. Just you want to talk about, I think you touched upon some of the filaments we're testing out. Yep, I Is have it, it open. So check out this filament here. So we're testing out some new pinks. Yeah. So this is called Cupid's Crush Metallic Pink HTPLA from the fine folks from Protopasta. The beer crafting filament guys, really cool stuff. So you've kind of already seen it. This is the kind of surface finish that you get. Very, very nice. Uh, it's got the glitter it in it. When it focuses, it looks even nicer. <laughs> hey, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Maybe. There it is. There you go. It looks spectacular. Yeah. yeah, it looks really great. Uh, it's not too saturated either. Like this one is. This one is, uh, it's not milk ink. This is actually from Filamentum. It's a great color. It's just, it blows out my camera. Can't see any of the details really. Eh, maybe you can. Kind of hurts my eyes. This one's nice. Yeah. This is uh, printed on glass, heated glass. So you get that nice uh, glossy reflective bottom. But it's got a great texture to it. It feels uh, not rough, but not shiny. It's, I don't know. It feels, it's got a good texture to it. It's got a kind of grip to it. Oh gosh. Anyway, and then this is the the tubes that we're showing. Really nice flat bottom there. Hello, camera. And uh, yeah, I print it at 220 because HT PLA, so you can enamel it, anneal it, or bake it. Again, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 nozzle. I mean, you're getting 0 0.23 layer widths or layer, uh, yeah, line widths with this. So those tubes work out really well. Gosh, man, that, that's... <laughs> doesn't want to focus today. It just doesn't want to, yeah, so... We'll be using it more. We'll probably stock it. It's a really nice color. I like it quite a bit. Another one we're playing around with is this gold. Real quick. There's this gold from Filamentum. It's a, it's a nice gold. I don't know what else to say about it. Focus slowly. It focuses, then it goes away. It's like, I like that foot. I'm going to focus on that foot. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Here, focus on that. <laughs> I think we gotta go throw this camera away and pick up one of these newer ones we're using on the. Uh... Yeah, there you go. It's all the same, man. Okay, never mind. 
Yeah. I don't like gold um, that mm. much. Oh, it's got some nice little gold particles anyway. on there. They're pretty cool. Just, Just some fill, filaments man. we're testing out. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. Hey, we're playing filaments. Uh -huh. Okay, so what else are we doing in Shop Talk? We have a screwdriver. You guys want to look oh, at the yeah, screwdriver? Oh, yeah, so people were asking about this really fancy motion activated screwdriver that we're using in the project video. It is very fancy. It's 100 bucks. You can get 10 bucks off if you use coupon code Waterbot. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a lot of screw, uh, well, you're doing screwing around. You're screwing <laughs> around screwing a lot. Around. It came with the case? I don't know it came with the case. Yes, it does come with the case. It came with two bits. Mm -hmm. I like the, um, I like it. Here, I'll talk about it. So I briefly talked about it last week. Um, you've been using it a lot more this week, Noah. What do you think about it? Uh, at first, I didn't like it. I was like, this isn't going to work well at all. Uh, in terms of the ergonomics, right? Because of the way, where the no, button is? It, yeah, I thought so. So, um, the one thing you have to do is you have to um, hold this button down. So the way I kind of like to do it is like, I like to put my finger up here mm. and then drive this down. I actually have this bit from uh, one of our kits. This is a hexagon, uh, 2.5 hex. Um, crack, I don't have any, hmm. uh, I don't have anything to screw. <laughs> This is the wrong bit. Yeah. We can't do it. So the bit that you're actually talking about comes from this kit here. Yes, it does. It's it should be linked in the uh, description. Yeah, we can And it has a bunch of different little bits you can use. What's that? This one? The tri -wing? I don't know. PH1 or two? It's one of those. So, the, so it can work with any of these standard bits, I guess they are. You don't have to turn it on, it's always on. Mm -hmm. USB up there for recharging. Used it quite a bit and haven't recharged it a uh, second time since we've uh, charged it the first time. So you really do kind of have to go like this or go like that to kind of um, mm -hmm. tell it which way you want to go. Has a nice amount of torque. The only thing is for actually creating uh, threads inside of 3D printed parts. It just doesn't have the torque to be able to push those uh, screws through. So unfortunately, you do need to have a more powerful drill for actually creating those or use a tap uh, tool to create the threads. Yeah, a little slippery. I mean, it's it's not, no, it's not really slippery, but it's not as grippy as I'd like, but it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. This doesn't come apart here. It doesn't look like it does. Um, it's It's got good weight to it. It's oh, not yeah. like bulky. Now I got an impact driver and I can impact drive that, but it's too big, man. Mm -hmm. This is really nice and slim. It's not Definitely. lightweight, it's got some weight to it, but I kind of like that it does, because it mm -hmm. kind of weighs down the screw, um, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, but I don't know, I like it a lot. I use it all the time. So 10% off, yay. Yeah. Check it out if you are in need of a fast a way really to good electric screw screwdriver. things in. Yeah, we're doing a lot of uh, you know, kind of small robotics, not kind of homework, where you would use an impact drill. You wouldn't use this to build your furniture, right? But you do. You would for your smaller parts, maybe your robotics. Yeah. I don't know. It was a cool screw. Screwdriver. All right. Like let's it. jump into this week's community makes. Got a couple of really cool makes from the community. First one is. This is the flex. This flexi week's time stego, out Tuesday. Flexi Stego Dual Extruded Dyno. This is a remix that we put together. Uh, we just separated the parts for dual extrusion. Mm -hmm. the original designs right here. Remix from. Weird 119 on Thingiverse, or John, as his name is. Flexi Stegosaurus was uploaded by John. He put this together. Very cool. Let's take a look at the video of the time lapse. Here it is. So it's utilizing the, fl uh, the hinge mechanism that a lot of the people use for making these flexible uh, prints. Yep, prints in place. All no assembly place. required. Mm -hmm. You are going to need, unfortunately, some support material to hold up the base plates for the body yeah. and then the little in-between ones as well. But just make sure you uh, have enough Z separation so it's not uh, fusing to the main part of the body. And it has a nice uh, amount of flex to it. Hinge. Hinge. Good hinge going on there. Yeah. A little bit of contamination there. Looks like. Yeah, Sorry right at the top. We can show that off on the overhead. Nice little design, two dino themed flexi uh, parts that have been popping up. The only problem I think is the smaller hinges that are right at the tip of the tail. I'm too scared to actually try to separate these two. 
might have fused a little bit, but uh, for the most part, the whole thing has held up very well. This was actually found in the bottom of Gavin's toy box, yeah. so I'm very surprised that none of these parts have broken. Yeah, the plates specifically. Especially the plates, yeah. It looks like you just snap them by going that. I think one did. Yeah. We glued it. Yeah, I did glue one of these uh, when I was removing the support material. I did manage to rip one of those off, but I don't even remember which one it was now. Yeah. Is it sharp and pointy? Uh, it is a little sharp. Yeah. Would you trust it with your five-year-old? Uh, yes. <laughs> I have, and he hasn't cut himself yet. <laughs> but nice little uh, amount of movement on here. If you want to do like some stop motion or something like that, it would definitely hold yeah. up with some micro adjustments and movements. Yep. So definitely a cool little hinge design for making flexible little dinos. Yep. Great demonstration of dual extrusion. So if you want to put your dual extruder to work uh, and test it out, you can try it with print in place because mm -hmm. it's testing not just the calibration, but the the hinges that have to print in place and it's swapping between nozzles to just create this hinge. So pretty neat. You can see it here in the design. So we uploaded it as a remix. You can check it out. It's there. Some people like it. Yep. Sweet. Next thing we want to take a look at is some tiger? remixes this week. Uh, Tesla charger connector dock. So we put together a little uh, hanger for our uh, charger. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. uh, this gentleman here, Gary the Maker, he uh, remixed it so that he can bolt it into his shelving. His shelving has uh, kind of these exposed holes so you can attach stuff. Ours didn't have that, so we did this whole clip mechanism. So we remixed it, um, and he offered the Fusion 360 file as well. Printed on his Prisha i3 at a 1.1 layer height. Wow, that's wow. really great. And he did some infill as well, and he talks about it there in the description. So that worked out really well. I'm glad to see that yeah, that yeah, worked yeah. out, and he did it with the bolt and everything. All right. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we got another remix. Actually, it's a make. Uh, this is from B Game Over. We posted this. This is a Raspberry Pi B Plus face case. Lovely face case. It's got this nice face for your case. We got another post make of Pi Girl 2. This is from uh, Genovas. This is the Pi Girl 2 build. Looks really great. Printed on a mono price printer, maker select, 0.16 layer height. Case didn't quite come out perfectly because my printer hates me, <laughs> but I'm so glad I finally <laughs> did this. The case also snapped together perfectly. Was a little leery that the new versions didn't use screws, but seemed solid enough. All right. Woo. Yeah, because, uh, you know, snap fits. Mm -hmm. He also posted a remix. This is a great remix. You take the power boost, right? There's status LEDs that tells you when the battery is low. Mm -hmm. Well, you can. he broke those out. He, uh, he desoldered the LEDs from the, the, from the power boost and broke oh. them out into his own. I didn't realize that's what he did. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Wow. And there's three LEDs. Red means bad, you're about to huh. die. Yellow means it's getting low. Green means you're good to go. Wow. And they show here in the side of the case. That's so awesome. Really great remix. I love seeing this type of stuff. I like the transparency of it where it's just like mm. a layer, mm -hmm. just enough so that the light can shine that's through right. it. Right. You kind of have to break wow. it out because you really won't be able to see that because there's so much stacking. It's great. It's a little bit more extra wiring, but if you got the chops and you want the experience, do it. Excellent really job. Really great. I love so it. He talks about it here. Yeah, so great work, Genomest. And then keeping in the same theme of that, here is the Pi Girl Zero remix by Spooner2011. This is great. Let's take a look at the actual hero shot of this guy. This is a wonderful remix of the Pi Girl. So this is a PlayStation style remote. This features a lot of little elements that are really kind of hexagon style. You can see that the, the screen is elevated, angled up for better ergonomics. It's got a handle design for better ergonomics. The buttons are um, broken out as well. They're raised. It's sort of a drafted angle so that you can play better. <laughs> Uh, four screws seem to attach together. You get this kind of dual tone color if you pick different colors. Even the buttons in the back are <laughs> hexagons. You want to see crazy hexagons? The standoffs in the screw holes are hexagons. Wow. Where do you <laughs> get these hexagon screw That's threads? Awesome. That's great. You've got webbings in all the various places for support. Um, some very nicely then, str strategically placed webbings. These are manually up. designed support material that is supposed to be removed. And he labels in red, uh, which, where they get cut, right here, here, and here. Right, this is a render, I'm thinking. And that's the, the preview of the 
and Thingiverse of mm -hmm. what the STL looks like. So it prints up like that with no this supports. Excellent. The supports are built in, and these are the buttons. They um, no D-pad means no uh, misfiring. So mm, that was mm -hmm. really great. So they're all broken out. That's why the PlayStation was such a revolutionary controller because those the D-pad was broken out individual left, right, up, down. Very, very cool design. Thank you, Spooner2011, for posting it. I asked him if he had a video of it. He said, Psh, for sure. He created a stand for it as well. Very cool. So this, again, the Pi Girl Guts. So Pi Girl, uh, the little gamepad PCB, and the Power Boost, and the Pi Zero. Pretty sweet. I like the size of it. Really nice. Also using the, uh, the, the, the soft touch buttons that we uh, stock in the store. And um, he was playing some 3D games here, I think, on Nintendo 64. Do you guys know? This looks like, like F1 Formula Racing, or what is it, Freeze? I forget what it was called. But it seems to run pretty well. Cool. Anyway, the build instructions are fairly the same, just different case. Really, really cool, though. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal yeah, demo. Yeah, uh, no love audio. The case design yeah. for this. I love yeah. that it's running the, uh, it's F0, right? The I think, oh, F0, that's what it's called. F0 on a Pi Zero. <laughs> so sweet. Shout outs to uh, <laughs> Spooner in 2011. Yeah, this is excellent design. Very cool. Very cool stuff. So check it out. It's on Thingiverse as a remix. Where am I? And then Here the I last one, I believe. No, I think that that's good? the last one. Good. We got two awesome, spare, awesome community makes from everybody. Yeah. Thanks. If you guys would like to share any of your projects, they don't have to be makes of our projects. They can be your own projects. Mm -hmm. You can share them in the Discord. We have a we have a project showroom there yes. channel, uh, or you can add us directly. Uh, support at adafruit.com. I really appreciate it when you guys do that because then our team actually takes it and looks at it mm -hmm. and posts about it. Yep. So we have a nice spreadsheet full yeah. of uh, future posts for all of the 3D Thursday. Yeah. As well as. As well as uh, uh, listings for our shows as well for putting that in there. Yeah, you know, please do share it with us because there are there are a lot of things that we miss because we're in the trenches working and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we miss a lot of stuff. Sorry if we don't share, share it, but definitely um, add us. You add can add us. Yeah, any of the still. social channels for those to get featured. Yes, we need more content. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the show. Later tonight we have another show. We have show and tell, seven thirty mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern time. We'll be there. Some yep. other eight for peeps and folks around the community, around the world, yep. sharing their stuff. A lot of really cool projects that are going to be showing up there, so definitely make sure to tune in for that. Right after show and tell, we have Ask an Engineer, Lamar and Phil, full hour of all of the cool new products coming out, news and more, all of the stuff going on in the maker world. Yep. And then tomorrow, we get to jump into John Park's workshop. That's cool. Lots of more Lego stuff. So if you like this, definitely check that out. Working more. on some Lego more. robots as well. Lego. Coupon code on Thursday as well during John's show. So definitely tune in for that. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. Yep. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. we'll, uh, you know, see you guys next week. Yep. We'll be on all the socials. If you guys want to see some of the behind the scenes of some of the projects we're working on, of course, follow Idfruit on all of those as well. Yeah. Do you have any? I think that's it. Yeah, thank <laughs> you guys again. Don't forget to make a great day. Good luck with all your project projects. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. See you guys. We'll leave you with the, the, the fail or we're good? I think we got a fail. All right. Next week. Bye. Thank you.